Aloha, it is Dave Lawrence, and um, we are at Kokua for Japan, and we're, we're high above the festivities, and I'm with a buddy I've, I've spoken to too many times to count, pretty much, Mick Fleetwood. Aloha and mahalo, brother. Ah, uh, aloha. Thanks for taking some more time for me. Uh, last time we talked, it was after you were, you were just doing two nights over over December, the all-star get-together that you had in Lahaina, I guess it was. Oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, you're talking about this year? This yeah, was it was in December. It was right before the food bank gig and the, and the Lahaina theater gig. That would be, uh, and I suddenly, I was didn't realize one I was lucky because we had such a great turnout with Alice Cooper and uh, the sort of new the new honor for that show was was having uh, David um, Hatfield James Hatfield James. from Metallica yeah and then then I completely so I was overwhelmed because I had to learn a Metallica song <laughs> I had a nervous breakdown <laughs> they're, they're way more complicated than you realize <laughs> uh, but he uh, it's a great picture of all of you yeah, and we had a great show. It was good fun. Oh, that, was, that was good stuff. Where were you when, uh, I mean, I've been asking different people throughout the day just to paint a picture of where, where different folks like you who are now giving your time to help out in this. Where were you when the tsunami happened? Well, I live in Maui, and I was at home. And I, I watch a lot of news, so I'm, I'm usually pretty up. I'm not one of those people that suddenly finds out, like, four days later. I really watch the news a lot. Um... And it was like a surreal, sort of like one of those things where you, you're you watching something, you're going like, and I saw this, these pictures of, of this movement of this water, and it, it, it sort of made me feel sick, because you realize this is really happening. And that's the first moment. I wasn't told about it. I saw it and heard it. And it was sort of uh, surreal. And it, it, it only gives you not even a millionth of a glimpse of how it must be. And we all have moments in our lives when something happens where it's so shocking. It is, you, you're in shock. And it is surreal. So being there, I cannot imagine the that that feeling because it was it was bad enough just seeing it you know four thousand miles away on a TV and you feel sick. The scope of it was hard to comprehend as you watch the waves. I think I know what you're talking about. We may have even been seeing the same thing. You just couldn't. It was beyond movies. You can't sort of put it together, and then of course you you immediately and still in in all these weeks afterwards you're still trying to compute, not for yourself, but to compute and take on board the enormity for, for the folks that, that, that were directly involved, and then for the Japanese people themselves, because it it's, it's literally has devastated people emotionally, I'm sure, uh, and insecurities of, of all sorts of things that have followed, you know, with uh, production of, of their industries and all sorts of things and and, and the fallout. Right, now, the nuclear react. The, the nuclear thing is almost the most spooky thing about it. It's like a triple whammy. And that, it is like a triple whammy and, and one hopes and but is not quite sure whether not only themselves and us included that people are really being as truthful as they need to be and one can only hope that that is going to be uh, properly addressed uh, as we go forward, as they go forward in, in handling this, this cat catastrophe. And we'll get back to Japan in just a moment, but certainly because Mick is a resident here in the States, so he, he's acutely aware that while the scale of the destruction here isn't even on the same kind of measurement level as what happened in Japan, compared to the rest of the United States, we did suffer $30 million in damage, $22 million of it to private property. And, and I'm just curious, over there, were, was anything of yours personally affected or any of your friends, did they suffer any damage? No, uh, but... It, to connected to my family um, my eldest daughter Amy who lives in LA uh, just recently uh, on a private level thank goodness found, found a very lovely chap whose father lives on the big island she had just been there uh, to meet his family and I'm forgetting exactly where it is and 
they're blessed uh, the family is blessed with having a, a lovely house a real substantial home it is no longer there mm-hmm. the whole thing was trashed gone so i i have direct n- knowledge of you know not thank god not huge amounts of it but even even in maui it was very selective i i was talking with someone uh, I meet a lot of people who sort of know me because they know me and I don't know them, you know, <laughs> which there's me and I'm their best friend. And, and, and by the way, I love that. So uh, that's never a problem. And I was talking to someone in a restaurant about what had happened to my family. But, you know, my, I have a I look after my mother. So uh, my wife had to get her up on the side of a mountain because we, we live near the ocean and and that was and I couldn't be with them because I was up country and all this stuff and this lady and I was sort of being upbeat about just you know luckily it was it was sort of crazy and it turned everyone was getting drunk and whatever up in the hills and uh, and then she segued into she li- I, I said I live on the lower road and she said so do I uh, in not far from Napili in, in Maui and she said we lost the whole bottom floor and I said it so it was sort of selective what happened and then Lahaina Harbor got hit uh, and uh, truthfully the the boats that were lost were people who unfortunately were not able to get into the harbor and uh, get their boats out of there because what happens they're tethered down so the water water what is driving them up but they can't get up to to reach the top of the water so that they basically uh, the boats get drowned. They start smacking into stuff. Right. So, <clears throat> no, but it was a, a lesson learned of, for all of us, you know, of what can happen. And I, I just want to segue back into uh, what I personally look at as, as something that it, the good coming out of this is f- the lesson learned for everyone on this planet is how the Japanese people have handled this. And, and it is remarkable. And I have to say, there are, through lots of studies, which doesn't say a hell of a lot for some of the <laughs> the vast metropolises that exist, you know, certainly in North America, where they go, if this had happened, and it's... It, it, People would have been stealing, looting. looting and God knows what. And I saw a, a, a clip on the reporter was basically trying to find someone that had been robbed. <laughs> and, and he couldn't. Or gouged. People are lowering prices. All, all of the above. And I think, I think that's a real representation and a tribute to the Japanese people. And I think it's a wonderful thing that, that we can all well take a look at that god forbid you know in la and california and and many places really all over the world it seems to be increasingly faced with catastrophic mother nature out of our hands got to handle situations and this would be a great reminder as to how you can aspire and and handle something graciously and beautifully as the japanese people have in total and I think that's really an inspiring thing that we, we should take a close look at. It's like a roadmap in some ways of how to deal with the situation. I, I do. It's a total blueprint. Uh, and it's part of, of their culture uh, representing itself in, in the most precious and beautiful way. And if we got a quarter of the way in, in, in doing that in terms of being kind to one another when these awful things happen and not to go into a full body panic their preparation paid off as well and we all need to be quietly aware of, of things that we can do in our private lives that and I'll, I'll be the first to admit you know I don't have a, a proper setup uh, on the island I have one in LA an earthquake kit and all this stuff but you just don't do it we say the same thing. It's so hard, and we've had so many warnings living here. Isn't it difficult? It's hard to get all the water and stockpile the radio. And, and you know what? You can bet your bottom dollar. And, of course, uh, uh, tragically, the, the, when the people right at the, the center of this, this tragedy were not able to do anything at all because it simply was so catastrophic they had no time. But I can absolutely know that much like... Uh, the, the Swiss are, are very prepared, and, and it's almost legislated stuff where 
it's now normal for generation after generation that they are prepared, and they really are. That they have in schools all of the earthquake preparedness, or for and they know what they're doing and they know where to go. And I think we need to be inspired on that level uh, on these islands for sure, because that could be us. The discipline, I think, is what you're saying that they approach to the, the seriousness. Uh, yeah. There's, there's no question. You uh, talking about Japan. You're one of these artists at this festival who, uh, like a lot of the people I was talking to, I, I got to spend some time. I had breakfast actually with Michael McDonald, and we were talking about some of his personal experiences over there. Uh, you've been there a lot. Just kind of, if you can, you were talking about the way that we've learned from how the people of Japan have reacted to this in being a traveler visiting Japan and a performer who's gone there. Have you had any experiences in the country that have made you say, you know, they've been special or remarkable in that way? About the, the people's mentality? Well, uh, we have uh, most mostly in years gone by, which is, uh, but I have great, great memories of it, it's a profound experience when you first get off a plane or a boat. Uh, and arrive in in Japan, and I suspect it's really basically always been like that. The the cultural uh, atmosphere is so different that it's and it's incredible to me. It's like astounding, you know, where the their their pace that they have and the rhythm they have amongst themselves it is. You, it sort of baffles baffles you to start with, and then you go, it can't, this isn't real, is it? And then you realize it is real, and it's ingrained, and it's very real. And, and that's when you, it clicks, and you go, I have, I have just been exposed to something that is extremely unique, and it's all good. Are they more patient? Sorry? Are they more patient? I, I would say that, that oh, absolutely. That by the the very nature of of knowing, being in in in, in Rome or or in London in the rush hour, uh, and and Tokyo, which is like a thousand times worse in terms of the amount of people that are squidged together. Squidged. It's a good word. <laughs> that would be an English word. Uh, and the patients. Is it's not even they're not even aware that they're being patient. They're just being how they are, and that's what's happened and translated in this in this tragedy. All of that's come out and come to the fore. So uh, dealing uh, with I mean our only our only humorous problem with that that we I remember when we first played in Japan, the audiences were so as it turned out so polite. That we thought we were dying a death, you know. They don't like us. <laughs> they, they're not getting up out of their seats. Uh, and, and in truth, when we realised that they, they they don't actually get up out of their seats because they think it would be disrespectful while you're playing, which is I, and now I think things have, have they've got more rock and roll uh, savvy uh, with all the, the bands and stuff. That this was a long way back, but. And that was sort of charming in itself. And, we got, and of course, the promoter had sort of vaguely said, "Don't, don't worry about." It. But when it actually happened, we're going like, "Oh my God!" And then we thought that we weren't doing something right. We immediately got insecure and thought, like, the next show, like, what, what are we doing wrong? And, and they said, "No, no, 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 no. They're, they're loving it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. They're so polite." Then you're going like, "Well, maybe they need not to be so polite." And then, we, and when, then we would say like. You, you, and we literally made little speeches, and Stevie learned to say something in Japan, which was, you know, please get up out of the seat and enjoy yourself, and and there was there was that was a sort of humorous moment where we we had to get used to the reality of 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 their graciousness, you know. And that's the same sort of thing, I guess. That's why I asked you that question, you, you, and you eloquently showed the comparison between what you had said earlier, how we can learn from how the Japanese are handling the situation, and then you track it through your own experiences there, and you find that, lo and behold, there's this level of patience or reserve or some discipline. I'm not sure what the great... The, it, it's all there, and, 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 and of course, it's, 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 such a, it's a cultural thing that we, we've got so much diversity you know, even in Europe and, and and through the ages and then, of course, the American story and all the lovely things, that the good and the bad of it and the, and the mixing of all the lovely cultures. And 
their culture is so intact even though they've they've made the massive excursion to to be you know with, with the commerce and 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 business which has been a huge success for the japanese people you know since the second world war and 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 to their credit it's almost amazing how much they've still retained their culture and but they have and and they have that sense of well-being i think uh, that, that gives them uh, a, I think a real sense of identity uh, that can help. I, I believe I'm just presupposing can help this type of a situation where they really rally around who they are and and they they're so much part of the world, but they still have reverence from from whence they they have come, and uh, that's admirable to see and that's sort of just a, a, as a note to wrap it up on uh, I do really I think that there's a, a real coming together you talk about the way that the Japanese have dealt with the situation I just want to commend you guys as artists as, as we just wrap up this interview we're here at Kokua for Japan the response here in Hawaii between our local performers and between the performers like yourself who are local performers but are also seen as international artists it's outstanding um, what will, will people be getting a taste of today if you can just tip your hat a little bit of what's in store for from from seeing brother Mick. Well, uh, what what I'm I mean I know that there's there's more going on than than I even realize. It, it, it this whole thing seemed to grow organically. There's probably people being added to the bill as we speak, but uh uh like Jack Johnson is is just joined. I, I don't think he was uh, in the initial line. Yeah, yeah, uh, and so that's going to I saw him in Maui a little while ago. I don't know him, but I love his music, so I'm excited I'm excited about seeing that myself. Uh, and from Maui, the, the contingent there is Michael McDonald and Pat Simmons from the Doobie Brothers, me from Fleetwood Mac, uh, and um, uh, I'm blanking out the bass player from Bonnie Raitt. Um, Hutch Hutchinson? Hutch, yeah, Hutch Hutchinson, who I haven't played with for years and is an incredible musician, just I'm so excited being a drummer to be playing with him and honored to be playing with him. and. I am a complete Willie Nelson fan, and I know Willie because he lives on, on Maui. I don't know him uh, as does Pat and, and probably Michael uh, as well, We've, but I know him. But I, I am literally like a stalker fan, so he rehearsed at my house uh, to do the show. Uh, so I am I'm literally quaking in my boots that I don't mess it up for him so that's great but the sh show's got so many great people and you know Henry of course Henry Capono and uh, uh, who totally uh, his wife uh, Leslie um, phoned me up and told me what, what was going on and, and they I know have been incredibly responsible for what is happening here this afternoon uh, as uh, a lot of other people that I, I don't know personally so it, it's a community coming together and and the relevance is obvious and the, the subtext to it is uh, the, these islands have, have a lineage and a, co a connection with Japan culturally, uh, generationally, in terms of the, the Japanese community here that's uh, very much part of these islands. So it's, it's very apropos and it's, it's something that the happy part is seeing an, uh, the island community is, is sort of village-esque is that these things can actually come together so quickly it seems a lot less possible in some of these great metropolis type places where it all it happens but it doesn't happen maybe as quickly as something we got to do this we're doing it and suddenly well I'll do it I'll do it and oh yeah I'll come and come rehearse at my house and suddenly our little contingent from Maui is is walking on stage you know this afternoon uh, uh, and I'm honored to be here. Uh, you guys have done a great thing and just wanted to end it by saying thank you. We appreciate you guys coming over and, as you noted, rallying. So a big mahalo, Brother Mick. Yeah, amen.